the state of Texas roads, deeply tied to the state of oil production. As Texas depends more and more on the energy sector to pay for highways, prices are dropping. What happens next? What can we do? It's all coming up on State of Texas In Depth. Good morning and thank you for joining us for State of Texas In Depth. I'm Josh Hinkle. It's been a little holiday of sorts. Gas under $2 a gallon. The cheap fill-ups may be over though, with prices starting to go back up. But today we're taking a closer look at the other impact of the low prices here in Texas. We're in energy states, so low prices affect jobs and taxes. Oil prices started slipping in December, but just in the last few weeks, production took a nosedive. According to Houston-based energy company Baker Hughes, there were 900 drilling rigs in Texas in the last week of November before prices really dropped. By the end of January, the energy companies cut the number of rigs drilling new wells down to less than 700. That is a 22% drop. Baker Hughes and other Houston companies are feeling the pinch. Tens of thousands of workers were laid off in January. More layoffs could still come. Back in the fall, while prices were still high, I showed a problem caused by the oil industry. Big trucks tearing up the roads in the Eagle Ford Shale down in Carnes County. They're Carnes County's form of growing pains. Small rural highways crumbling away every day. Gradually get beat up little by little. Jeremy Hernandez is part of the population increase in the last few years, setting up his shop behind the wheel. Accidents happen. Not what you want to do is wake up in the morning and be involved in an accident. TxDOT has tried to make tax dollars stretch, tackling traffic problems by widening roads and creating two mile long passing lanes for drivers to safely get around these semi trucks. Hundreds of them each week. The reason they're all rolling in, there are about 5,000 of those oil wells now. In 2008, there were only 100, and they only produced about 20,000 barrels of oil each month. Now, that number is 6.2 million. Which means a lot of money for the state. And a lot of trucks to haul heavy machinery and the oil itself. In the year after the boom began, the number of vehicle accidents reported here rose from 130 a year to more than 400. People hit a pothole and have a blowout and then go off to the side of the road, or it could be the tractor trailer loaded with, with crude oil rolling over. Tough to blame it all on the oil business, but locals say it did get worse as traffic increased. Seems like it's a weekly event. Have to be alert, you have to be a defensive driver. Accidents are a lot more common than they used to be. Last year, 11 people died on these roads. And while accidents might be good for Hernandez's business, that's a statistic he hates to hear. Rather than be safe on the road, yes. To help tackle those road problems as well as congestion across the state, voters overwhelmingly approved Proposition 1 back in November. That set aside money from oil and gas production taxes to help with road construction and maintenance. This year, that gave about $1.7 billion to TxDOT, but it's only a third of what the agency says it needs to keep congestion at its current level. That's why there will be another push this session to dedicate more of the motor vehicle sales tax to highways. And for more perspective, I'm joined now by Mose Michelle from KUT's State Impact. Thank you for joining us. Hi, Josh. So we were just talking about roads and transportation and how the oil and gas revenue is going to affect that. What we're seeing right now in the industry, though, do you think lawmakers are scared of what's happening with that fund in particular and what they're going to be able to do for transportation in the future? Yeah, well, I mean, I think for lawmakers right now, as they look at the budget, uh, they're, they're, it's almost like they're trying to hit a moving target. Uh, no one's exactly sure, and of course we have estimates, but no one knows for sure what the price of a barrel of oil is going to look like a year from now, two years from now. But that's exactly the kind of thing that's going to dictate how much money we have to spend for transportation, which you mentioned, and for other things as well. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm sure they're concerned. What other legislation are you seeing that's oil energy related at the Capitol right now that even has a realistic possibility of passing? I think a lot of people are looking at local government's uh, roles in regulating uh, the business. Now, ironically, if we see a large downturn in, in oil and gas exploration, this might not be as big an issue as it has been with our, with our boom. But uh, we did see uh, the town of the city of Denton pass a, a ban on hydraulic fracturing and its city limits. That's being litigated now. There are a lot of lawmakers that have talked about trying to kind of legislate, uh, uh, to essentially trying to uh, tell local governments that they can't severely limit um, 
uh, drilling and, and production in their jurisdictions. So that's something that we could see as well. Is that something you've heard a lot about recently, um, fracturing? Because uh, I know you've covered it recently, but it seems like here in Central Texas, it doesn't really seem to be a topic that a lot of people think about because it's not happening right around here. Right, and you know, that really gets to the, the multiplier effect that this industry can have. So we can talk about how much oil costs currently, um, and we can talk about how that might impact state budgets in terms of the tax. But there's this whole, uh, if you think about a town that has a factory in it, right, and that factory starts laying people off, well then maybe the restaurant in that town doesn't have the same clientele so suddenly that restaurant doesn't have as much money there could be this whole kind of multiplier effect within the state of co economy that we could see um, in places like Austin where there aren't people drilling left and right mm -hmm. and do you think that Texas is learning anything from other states that are dealing with similar crises so um, if you talk to people uh, who have been around through boom and bust cycles before, and obviously what we're seeing now isn't akin to maybe some of the severe busts that we've seen in the past, but what they'll tell you is that the state's economy is better diversified and that we may not have the same kind of uh, severe uh, problems that we've seen in the past. But nobody knows for sure exactly where this is going. I mean, a lot of this is, frankly, in terms of when it comes to the price of oil is beyond our control. It, these are things that happen um, in the larger world, and so we, we need to wait and see. All right. Mose, thank you for being with us. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, Josh. All right, and he went from heading up the state's Department of Agriculture to representing the massive energy industry. I sit down with the new Texas Oil and Gas Association president, Todd Staples, when State of Texas In-Depth returns. I'll go back to State of Texas in depth. For years, he served in the state capitol and the Texas Department of Agriculture. Now, Todd Staples is in charge of the Texas Oil and Gas Association. Thank you for being with us. I don't know what I call you now. Commissioner, President, Todd, <laughs> what is it? Just call me. Just call me. <laughs> All right. So, when you took over this job, did you think that the industry is going to be where it is now? Because things were looking pretty up and up back then. Well, because of research and innovation, oil and gas industry uh, has produced more better than ever and found new resources to make our nation energy independent. But because of that success, uh, the supply of oil and gas has reached new proportions. And so um, I think the oil and gas industry is not unaccustomed to ebbs and flows. We live in a free market-based economy, but we did surprisingly see a big drop-off because we had a contraction in the world economy, and we had the United States, led by the great state of Texas, continuing to produce more than we ever have. As a matter of fact, you know, you think about 10 years ago, I don't think anyone would have thought that the United States would surpass uh, Saudi Arabia or Russia in terms of oil and natural gas production, but we have becoming the world's leader. The, you obviously got the you know predictions out there and everything being with the largest group of this kind in Texas. Do you think that we're going to see a big change in gas prices? I know everyone loved having it so low for a long time. Yeah, they really have, and uh, the oil and gas industry has been a leader in the Texas economy. The oil and gas industry has one of the biggest job multiplier effects uh, of any, and thanks to productive oil and gas, I think about $1.7 billion was recently transferred to help build our roads. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, the, the contribution of taxes and royalties to state and local government, the last time it was measured, was just under $14 billion. But because of the decline in prices, uh, pay, people are paying less at the pump. They're happy about that. But what's not so fun is that every community in Texas is now affected because companies are having to tighten their belt with the decline in prices. We're seeing rigs being stacked. Uh, and taking some precautionary measures that I believe will have an impact on our state's economy uh, because of the lower job growth and because of uh, fewer local expenditures as well. What's it going to be like in Texas compared to some other oil producing states like Alaska and the Dakotas that have been going through something similar? You know, I think uh, the industry has responded a little bit quicker maybe. You've seen them recognize that they have to contract and, and restrict their, their growth opportunities. I think Texas is well positioned 
positioned and even better positioned from, from some of these other states. We are still very much an oil and gas based economy, but we also have diversified our economy over the last few years. New companies moving in, thousand people a day that we benefited from. So we have some diversification, but make no mistake, uh, it, the state will be impacted uh, by the state of affairs in the oil and gas industry. With, you know, companies having to tighten their belts, as you say, what happens to all of those workers that might be losing their jobs now? That's the difficult part about it. We have families that are being displaced because the job levels are not there. And the legislature's in session. What we're hoping for is that we have a legislature that gives predictability and certainty to the industry so that uh, companies that are making investment decisions will say, you know, I want to put those dollars in Texas. We want to get those people back to work as quick as we can. And I, I think Texas has a lot to offer, and our legislature does, by making certain we have that predictability that is so important to get those jobs back going again. Yeah, I know it's early in the legislative session, but is your group already advocating for, you know, anything big at the Capitol right now? Well, we're certainly glad to see the uh, emphasis on transportation. Safety is very big to our member companies, and it's they recognize it's a very big part of our state's economy. Uh, we have companies that are using brackish water today, uh, getting off and away from freshwater sources, and that's done based on research and economics. We also would like to see uh, the legislature address a, a, a fact like uh, to make sure that we don't have a patchwork of laws or rules from city to city to city. We'd like some consistency there to make sure that when dollars are available that people are putting these dollars in Texas. When you have an account like the rainy day fund or the money that's going to be going into the highways because of Prop 1 that is dependent on oil and gas revenue, um, you know, do you worry about the availability of funding when people are like, oh, thank God we've got money for transportation and something like this happens. I think the legislature needs to be very cautious in their approach to this session because uh, we don't know when the price point will get back to the level that you see the rapid expansion that we've had. Fortunately, the oil and gas industry has been so productive the last several years. The rainy day fund is at a, hairy, a very high balance, so we have a lot of safety in terms of just financial security, but I think they're probably they're going to be looking at belt tightening and wisely so this legislative session because of the uncertainty of, of where we're going to be at the price point. All right. Commissioner, President Todd Staples, thank you very much. Appreciate being here with us. Always good to be with you, Josh. Thank you. All right. And thank you for joining us for State of Texas In-Depth. Remember, you can join us every Sunday morning in the 830 half hour for a broader look at Texas politics. Stay tuned for Meet the Press coming up at 9. I'm Josh Hinkle. Have a great day.